I'm Agent Weiss, and today I'm going to show you how to set up your new Samsung Q80T. It has really awesome features like a 120 Hz panel for watching fast-paced action, extra speakers that simulate surround sound, and adapted picture to match the lighting in the room. Let's get it set up so you can see what I mean. Here's what you'll need. If you're using the built-in tuner, you'll need an antenna or a coax cable connection, along with a cable subscription. If you're using Wi-Fi, you'll also need to have your network name and password. And if you'd like to be able to use your smartphone as a remote, you should have that handy as well. For this demo, I'll be using a Samsung S20. To get started, go ahead and turn on the TV. You'll see the option of completing the setup using the SmartThings app on your phone or by using your TV's remote. I'll go through both methods, but I'll start by using the app. First, download the SmartThings app if you haven't already. Now sign into the app with an existing Samsung account or create a new one. Tap on the plus symbol and then tap device and scan nearby. Select your new TV so your app can find it. When it's connected, tap start. Choose the location where your new TV will be set up. You can find more locations and rooms by pressing the arrow in the drop-down menu. When you've got the one you want, tap Next. Now the app is going to try to connect to your TV. While it's doing this, sometimes your SmartThings app will ask permission to record audio. This is normal. I'll choose Allow. The TV screen will now show a pin. Enter it into the app, and then tap Done. You'll notice your TV screen will now change, and you'll see some directions for the rest of the connection process. Go through the rest of the prompts, and as soon as your TV and app are successfully synced, you'll see the terms and conditions. Read through this information, and if you agree, tap I agree to all. When you're ready to move on, hit OK. Now it's time to name your TV, so it'll be easier to find in the app and your network. I'll name it Living Room TV. After that, tap Done and then Next. You might have to wait a minute for it to update, but when it's ready, you can choose a voice assistant. If you choose Bixby, you'll get some control of the TV and search features. With Alexa, you can use your voice to search for music, get weather info, along with a number of other Alexa commands. When you've made your selection, tap Next. Now your app will see if there are any external devices that can be controlled with the Samsung One remote control, like a cable connection or an antenna. Since I'm using an antenna, it'll find that automatically. Once it's found all of the external devices that it should, tap Next. The setup guide will ask for more information about your TV's location. Enter the zip code and then tap Done and Next to continue. On the next screen, you'll see some options for setting up apps. If there are any that you'd like to set up, select each one and follow the instructions. I'll do that later, so for now, I'll move on to the next step. Since I'm using an antenna, I'll need to do a channel scan, which looks for frequencies, creating a list of each available channel so I can easily flip between those. To begin that process, I'll select Start. The channel search will take a few minutes. When it's complete, select Done. Here you'll see the channel scan results. Again, the channel scan only applies if you're using an antenna or a cable connection without a box, meaning the coax cable is directly connected from your wall to the TV. When you're ready, tap Next. Select your service provider and tap Next again. And that's it. The TV is set up. You can select Done and start watching. But I promised that I'd walk you through how to set up your TV using just the remote, so let's do that now. Press the right side of the directional circle on the remote. You might see a white circle on your screen. This means your TV is trying to pair with your remote. If this happens, let it sit for a minute to complete the process. Then when the pairing is complete, press the right side again. Now it's time to connect any external devices like a cable connection, digital antenna, gaming system, Blu-ray player, or sound system. So take some time now to do that. When you're ready, select Next, and then press the center button. Now it's time to connect your TV to the internet. Either connect an ethernet cable to the back, or if you're using a wireless network, find it in the list and press the center button to choose it. Then, using the remote, enter the password and select Done. Once it's connected, read through the terms and conditions and choose which permissions you'd like. 
I'll choose I agree to all. Select OK to go to the next screen where you can link a Samsung account. This will make things like downloading apps easier. It'll also get your new TV into the Samsung SmartThings ecosystem. Select Sign In, enter the email address for your Samsung account, and choose Next. Then enter the password and choose Done and Sign In. Once you're signed in, select Next to choose your voice assistant. If you don't want to decide right now, select Choose Later. Now you can choose if you want your settings and info backed up to the Samsung Cloud. That might come in handy, so I'd recommend choosing Backup Data and then choosing Next. Enter your zip code and then select Done. Similar to before, it'll now do a channel scan and then show the results. Choose Next and select your service provider. You'll now see a summary of the setup followed by options for setting up apps. Again, if you'd like to install any, just select one and follow the instructions. Otherwise, choose Skip. All right, the hard work is done. Now you can set up the Smart Hub customization option, like installing other apps at the bottom of the screen. Look through the options and set it up the way you want. Then choose Done to move ahead, and then Yes. Now let's talk about Intelligent Mode. Intelligent Mode is a feature that automatically adjusts things like volume and brightness based on the environment and what you're watching. For now, I'll choose Skip. Finally, the next screen will have you test the remote. Just follow the prompts on the screen to make sure your remote is working properly, and when you're ready, select Next. And that's it! You're ready to start watching TV. Just select that option and enjoy. If you need to find any apps you've installed, it's pretty easy. In fact, your remote has special buttons to launch some of the popular ones. For others, just press the Smart Hub button on your remote and scroll left and right to find the app you want. If you need to download more apps at any point, just scroll left to the magnifying glass and select it. Then, using the on-screen keyboard, enter the app's name and select it. Follow the instructions to install and sign in, and you should be good to go. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, give it a like. If you have questions, let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tech tips from Best Buy. Thanks for watching.